Actor, director, author, and photographer, Leonard Nimoy was born on March 26, 1931 in Boston, Massachusetts. His parents were Jewish immigrants from Ukraine. Nimoy is best known for his portrayal of the alien Spock in the Star Trek series and movies. He first took and created the role of Spock in February 1964 in the two Star Trek television pilots, The Cage, and Where No Man Has Gone Before. The original Star Trek series first aired on NBC from September 8, 1966, to June 3, 1969. The NBC network cancelled it after three seasons and 79 episodes, only to have its popularity soar and expand years later. Nimoy had earlier appeared in many other TV series including The Outer Limits, The Lieutenant, Mission Impossible, and in many films, including the several Star Trek films. In 2015 he passed away at the age of 83. The excellent film For the Love of Spock, which chronicles his life and career, was produced by his son Adam in 2016. The following is an excerpt from a technical documentary produced in 1977, in which Leonard describes in detail how television works. The color excerpt runs about seven minutes. It is provided here for its educational and historical value and for review and comment. Hello, I'm Leonard Nimoy. I'm an actor. And a lot of my acting has been for television, a medium which has gone through tremendous growth in the short time it has existed. Television has changed from an entertainment novelty into a powerful presence in our lives. And it has developed a host of new forms and new uses. So much so, in fact, that any of you watching this now could find yourself using television in your work. So, here's a quick introduction to the world of television. In it, you'll find out how television works, about the different kinds of television. Throughout its history, the basic principles of television remain the same. What makes television possible? It is this law of nature, that one form of energy can be changed into another. Light can be changed into electricity, and electricity can be changed back into light. If you want a familiar example, you can start with this, the human eye. Light enters the eye where it becomes an electrical signal, which is carried by the optic nerve into the brain for interpretation. Our eyes, in fact, function somewhat like a television camera. In the case of television, light goes into the camera and what comes out is the video signal, code in the form of electrical current. The code uses voltage changes in the electrical current to indicate changes in the intensity of the light. Of course, most images are complex combinations of dark and light. The television camera handles this by scanning the image in lines so that the image is coded bit by bit and line by line. At the other end of the process, in the television set, the reverse is happening. Electricity is being turned into light. Electrons are striking the inside of the picture tube, which is coated with sensitive phosphors that light up when hit by the electrons. The beam of electrons in the television set is locked into sync, synchronization with the scanning beam in the television camera. The electron beam in the picture tube reproduces the image in the television camera, draws it in lights and darks, scan line by scan line, until the image is complete. In American broadcast television, there are 525 scan lines to make up one image, one frame, of video. But the US television system produces 30 video frames every second, resulting in the appearance of a smoothly moving image. That, in a simplified form, is how television works. But how does the television picture get from the station to your set at home? Let's go back to the video signal. It is brought to a transmitter. Inside the transmitter, an electric current is being generated 
which has the frequency which fits the channel assigned to the television station. This is called a carrier frequency. The carrier frequency and the video signal are mixed. The result is RF, radio frequency signal, which has both the frequency of the station and the changes in voltage of the video signal. The RF signal is amplified until it is powerful enough to radiate from the transmitter antenna into the atmosphere. The antenna of your television set picks up the RF and reduces it back to the video signal which produces the picture. Video signals and RF signals travel at the speed of light. 186,000 miles per second. So you see the image on your set at almost the same time as the camera sees it at the station. But suppose you want to delay broadcast or save material. That is done with videotape recorders, VTRs, and with videotape. Once again, the key to the process is the fact that one form of energy can be changed into another. In this case, the voltage changes of the video signal can be changed into magnetic patterns, which are invisible to the human eye, but which can be recorded on videotape. Today, there are different forms, different kinds of television, each with its own audience, its own uses. When I started in the acting business, only television networks and stations, and maybe, a few big universities could afford to make television programs. Well, things have changed since then, mostly for the better. Everything about television seems to have improved, in fact, except maybe the quality of the programming. But at least now, if you don't like the television you see, you can go out and make some of your own. Good luck. Ready to roll, crawl, ready music. How was it? Very good, Mr. Nemoy. Thank you. That's a wrap. My pleasure. See you next time. <laughs>